Salutations. Welcome to Spiritual Blitherings, Philosophical Ponderings, and Everything Ramblings at the Hopeful Humanist Cafe. Today in episode 20, a nomenclature for empowerment, C cubed. We're going to talk about ideas and flow, the good life, and resources for our spiritual toolbox as we continue with this mini-series on choice. This is a Just Some Guy production, and I'm that guy, Steve, your host, the Hopeful Humanist. And Today we're going to showcase a hopeful humanist idea encapsulated in the concept C-cubed. We'll start off with a quote from Jean-Paul Sartre from Existentialism and Human Emotions. Every man ought to say to himself, Am I really the kind of man who has the right to act in such a way that humanity might guide itself by my actions? Taking a, a moment to let that sink in, I think we might have Jean-Paul Sartre's response to the usual attack, the usual criticism on existentialism, that it is empty and vacuous and it has nothing concrete to offer us in terms of ways to conduct ourselves morally and ethically in this world. I think Jean-Paul Sartre here is recognizing that although he's not offering anything concrete in terms of a code of conduct, he's recognizing that when he makes a choice, he's choosing for all of humanity. That if he is saying yes to something for himself, that it's got to be understood that others might say yes to that too. And that if the thing that he does infringes upon the freedom of others, then others would be at liberty to make similar choices and infringe upon his freedom. So there's a, perhaps a, subtle reference to the golden rule, do unto others as you'd have them do unto yourself. When we think about this idea of the freedom to do whatever you want, it almost seems like it's, it's this license to actualize any and all of one's desires, which could lead to a very despairing world if, if everyone was doing things without giving pause or thought for others. And, and I think that explains why Jean-Paul Sartre talks about nausea, existential angst, and, and this idea of being condemned to be free because there's a real heaviness. There's a responsibility that bears down upon us and that we, we do need to take a moment to pause and to reflect. So we'll come back to that as we explore C cubed. A second quote though, that I think could be helpful and soften the heaviness of the reality that we are co-authors in our lives as we recognize and acknowledge and have to accept that we're living in an absurd world. This quote comes to us from Led Zeppelin, Stairway to Heaven. There are two paths you can go by, but in the long run, there's still time to change the road you're on. This is, this is reassuring. If it's the case that we make a decision and all decisions are final, the angst that Jean-Paul Sartre talks about would make so much sense. And it's an angst that exists and I feel that during my discussions with most people, there's something relatable to it in terms of the ongoing crisis of the human lived experience. But it's, it's reassuring to know, though, that we could retrace our steps and make our way back to an initial crossroad point and eventually take a different path that's more aligned and congruent with who we are. So we have our two quotes. We're equipped with our two quotes. To proceed, before we get to uh, C cubed, I'd like to note that uh, just by uh, just quick, a uh, quick revisitation of some of the ideas in the uh, previous podcast, episode 19, a phenomenon called choice in its phenomena, that we, we talked about life being a process of choice, introduced this idea introduced to us by Abraham H. Maslow, the idea of at some point recognizing and waking up to the fact that we are decision makers, that we are choosers, that we can impact the unfolding destiny of our lives by choosing this as opposed to that. And, and I refer to that as 
the dawning of agency and, and I invited listeners to perhaps make a, a choice history diagram to kind of really bring that to life. So with that in place and knowing that our, our starting point for this discussion is to embrace the position of William James, that my first act of free will is to, to believe in it, it would seem that we might do this happily. We might do this joyfully. But on page 28 of the Sources of Power by Gary Klein, uh, he, he notes this observation, this, this thought that was shared by two researchers, Janice and Mann, in 1977. And they shared this, this idea, this early research suggests that people actually avoid making decisions. And the reason that they avoid making decisions is because of the stress that they experience in terms of carrying out an analysis of choice. The traditional model for the decision-making process is referred to as a rational choice model. And there's any number of examples of different templates that people offer with slight variations and differences. But uh, Janice and Mann in the Sources of Power identify a couple of things that are, are probably pretty common to a whole bunch of different methods that people use in terms of making choices. We can imagine ourselves in our think tank room and you know, we're, 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 it's a decision tank that we've, we've assembled you know, uh, other sources, these, these great minds, and we're, we're going to make the best choice that we can by exploring all of these options. And, and the way that we're going to do this is we're going to thoroughly canvas a wide range of all the options that are available. We're going to survey a full range of objectives. What is it we want to accomplish? You know, the idea of purpose. We're going to carefully weigh the pros and cons and benefits of each option. We're going to intensely search for new information and evaluating the options because how quickly and accelerated life is changing in terms of this hyper-materialistic world. We're going to try to figure out when we get that new information, how we can assimilate it into our model. We're going to re-examine, you know, the positives and the negative consequences of each action. We're going to, because of the, the change and because of risks involved with decisions, we're going to include contingencies and we're going to make a choice and then we're going to assess it, right? And I'm, I'm assuming that as a, as a listener, there's a, a model that you're very familiar with that somehow lines up with this model offered by Janice and Mann. We, we can make it even a little bit more scientific and suggest that when we're identifying all these options and this lines up with some ideas by Pierre Solberg, and this, this approach is identified on page 10 of the Sources of Power by Gary Klein, that you know, we, we're going to figure out ways to evaluate these options, or like how can we determine if the ideas or the pros and cons in this option are better than that, and we create some weights, and then when we create these rates, we do, we do a rating, and then we, we assign numbers to capture which would be the best option. And then we pick the option with the highest score. So these are the things that we would do when we're making a decision. But my goal here is not to review a specific model. I'm going to provide some links in, in my show notes for people to explore different videos on YouTube, different TED Talks. I've got some uh, choice model formats that are also available. I'll put it in the links. But I want to do something a little bit different and, and just kind of focus on and flesh out what it is that I'm trying to get at in terms of this, this idea of C cubed. So C cubed is kind of a, a formula or a nomenclature of things that we need to be mindful of when we're making decisions. So the, the three C's are circumstance, choice, and consequence. And I, I think that whether or not we go through a formalized checklist of things to do when we're making decisions and problem solve, that these three areas of the decision-making experience in and of themselves are really important to think about, reflect on, 
and consider when we're making choices because it allows us to empower ourselves and recognize that there's more going on when we're making decisions instead of this mechanical process. It's, uh, it, it goes deeper than that. So in terms of C cubed, I guess there's a little bit of a story I, I, I could tell, and that will kind of shed light on what this C cubed concept is. So the first idea is that we're, we're talking here in terms of C cubed about an empowerment mindset, right? That there could be a point in one's life when we're experiencing a problem, a dilemma, a situation, an issue, or a challenge. And that in terms of C cubed, an empowerment mindset would be inviting a person to redefine or reframe what's going on as a point of decision. And this relates to that dawning of agency. So in terms of the, the three C's, the first C is circumstance. If, if we look at it on an ontological level, which is pretty heavy, this is the idea that uh, we are we're thrust into the world. There was no choice involved in me deciding to be born and brought into this world. But, but that's our circumstance. That's, that's our situation. And in, in terms of this, this circumstance, uh, you know, we can move away from a ontological level and we can look at a more practical, concrete level and say, well, you know, here I am, this particular specific being and I have, I'm, I'm situated in this context of living with this specific family in this specific city, in this specific part of the world, at this specific point in time in history. And we have a particular culture and we have certain rituals. And there are certain things that we collectively believe to be true. And my circumstance is such that I might be a particular height and of a particular gender. And that when we're thinking about the circumstance, what we're really doing is we're giving ourselves some realistic perspective about the limits that exist in terms of defining what we're capable of doing. The circumstance is, is it's like it's, it's our canvas on which we're painting the portrait of our being and it's the field of influence that impacts us in terms of all those things that uh, are involved in discussions about nature and nurture. So that, that's our starting point. We, we exist in a context. And that just knowing that can help us get a perspective about how we might need to navigate something. Once we recognize the essential aspects of our circumstance, then when the problem presents itself or there's a situation, we are able to redefine that as that point of decision, that moment of choice. And we recognize that, hey, you know, there's, there's a moment here where I could, there are two paths that I can go by and, and I'm, going to have to, I'm going to have to make a choice. We, we kind of, we, we addressed this idea in the previous episode about the myth of the golden choice. So when we're making choices now, we can open up to making the good enough choice. The best choice possible in the moment. Knowing that it's not going to be the perfect choice. And when we're making this choice and we recognize that we can go down path A or path B, when we when we eventually choose a path, when we make a choice, there's also this process of having to forfeit something. Well, well, I get what goes along with path A. I don't get what goes along with path B. I have to give some things up. This is what Dr. Joe Arve calls the trade-offs in the decision-making process. And so... When we're making choices, this might help us understand. This, this, this discussion might help us realize why we feel sad sometimes or why we're not able to completely really relish the things that we get with choosing a certain option because 
at the same time, simultaneously, we lose some things. There's an experience of loss that's going on. And when we're making these choices in terms of this choice point, we're, we're making choices that uh, relate to little decisions. You know, what kind of toothpaste am I going to buy? To the, the bigger life-altering choices where we recognize that with a certain act, we could change the direction of our lives abruptly in a 180 sense kind of way, right? Which brings us back to the bigness that Sartre was talking about in terms of recognizing that when we choose, we're choosing not only for ourselves, but we're, we're choosing for all of humankind. So th there we're sitting and we're recognizing that when we're making these choices, that we shouldn't lose sight of this idea of congruence, that the best choices are the choices that line up with our beliefs, our needs, our values, our strengths, our intentions, our desires, our interests, and that when we make self-congruent choices, we allow ourselves to remain within the realm of our authentic self. And that then allows us to stand in our power. Once we make a choice, and you know, at, at this point, in terms of the, the choice point, people would refer to whatever method of decision-making template or format works for them the best. But then we move into the last C domain, which is consequences. And here there's the outcome. There's the anticipated pros and the anticipated cons of our choice the things that we think will happen, and then as we follow through on our decision, things do happen and, and they land where they land. And we are, are, are facing the consequences of our choice in that moment. And there, there's kind of a, a gap. And, and here we find ourselves needing to make an evaluation and say, well, you know, so am I, am I on track? Am I closer to the thing that I wanted? And we also recognize here that there's a ripple effect, that the things that I, I decided to do, that the choice I made, it not only impacts me, but it impacts people in my family, people in my neighborhood, in my community, it, 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 things in my environment in terms of choices we're making, in terms of being consumers. So th this assessment is, 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 is really important. And here, we arrive, we arrive at the point of recognizing the revelatory nature of choice. And, I, and I'd like to refer back once again to Dr. Joe Arve, who says that, you know, the choices we make when, and when we recognize what they reveal about us, they then, these choices, reveal the things that we value and they're projected out into this world for others to see. And these decisions that we make ultimately define who we are. That is the C-cubed model. Circumstance, choice, consequence. And in terms of making the healthiest choices possible, we don't want to lose out or, or forget the importance of congruence things lining up. So I hope that uh, I've, I've given you some food for thought. I, I hope, if anything, maybe there, there's also a, a little bit of inspiration in terms of creating your own story for the uh, process of choice. We've got a lot of different ideas from the dawning of agency to the forfeiture of choice to the importance of congruence of our actions with beliefs, needs, values, and strengths, and intentions, and desires, and a thesis that is being presented by Dr. Joe Arve that ultimately our decisions define us, and they project out the values that we hold for the rest of the world to see. This is some stuff that I think is worth thinking about. I'm going to include a whole bunch of different resources for you to check out in the show notes. 
I hope you enjoyed this discussion, the, specifically this uh, hopeful humanist showcase moment of a nomenclature for empowerment, C-cubed. Thank you for joining me at the Hopeful Humanist Cafe for another tip of the iceberg conversation. It's a pleasure. Until our next meeting of minds, peace, take care, and as I shared in the last episode, may the choices you make be the wisest ones possible in the moments that you meet. Peace.